there are a few important things that to be that we need to keep in mind because there could be a little tricky questions here the first thing is guys you need to identify the femur whether you're looking at the anterior view or posterior view if your view is wrong you end up marking the wrong answer here if you look at this picture here this is the anterior view of the femur and I'll tell you how we identify that and that is a posterior view see when you look at the anterior view I can see greater trochanter I can see lesser trochanter also to an extent but not very clearly and the line which is extending between the two trochanter here this line is called as inter trochanteric line this is the inter trochanteric line between the greater trochanter and lesser trochanter that's an inter trochanteric line here but when you see it from the posterior aspect first of all lesser trochanter is very very clearly seen lesser trochanter it is more visible from posterior side because that lesser trochanter is not only toward the medial side it's more posteriorly also it's posterior medial it's posterior medial so I can see the lesser trochanter better when I see the femur from the dorsal aspect or posterior aspect and what you see between the greater trochanter and lesser trochanter here on the posterior side it's not the line we have an elevation that's a crest over there guys and this crest between the greater and lesser trochanter is called as inter trochanteric crest that's an inter trochanteric crest not the inter trochanteric line the crest there's a line clearly line over there and there is a, a, a very prominent elevation that you will see that is called as inter trochanteric crest inter trochanteric line when you see it from the front is actually giving attachment to the capsule of hip joint your hip joint capsule will be attached to the inter trochanteric line exactly like this but hip joint capsule when you see it on the posterior aspect it is not attached to the inter trochanteric crest it is attached to the base of the neck of the femur only leaving the crest outside here that's how these capsule are attached guys that's the capsule of the hip joint here right that's that's the capsule of the hip joint and you can see the capsule on the dorsal aspect on the posterior aspect is not attached to the inter trochanteric crest it is attached to the base of the neck of the femur only so these differences are good enough to tell you that what is the anterior end and what is the posterior surface of the femur even if the lower end of the femur is not visible when you look at the greater trochanter from the front the one muscle that you will see inserting on the greater trochanter from the front here guys the only muscle that you will see inserting on the greater trochanter from the front is the gluteus minimus muscle gluteus minimus muscle is to be seen there it's a gluteus minimus muscle gluteus minimus muscle is supplied by superior gluteal nerve I have to tell you about all these things here only it is supplied by superior gluteal nerve this the gluteus minimus muscle and this the main function of gluteus minimus muscle is basically the medial rotation of the thigh we have a lot of muscle for lateral rotation here but this is one muscle which helps in the medial rotation of the of the femur this helps in the medial rotation or better word you can call it internal rotation medial or internal rotation let's call it internal guys internal rotation of femur or internal rotation at hip joint this muscle is responsible for the internal rotation when you move your femur inside medially that is the done by gluteus medius and which is inserted on the greater trochanter anterior surface of greater trochanter guys important thing is anterior surface of greater trochanter that is greater trochanter now the catch is when you see it from the dorsal aspect when you see from the posterior aspect guys greater trochanter on its lateral aspect greater trochanter on its lateral aspect will have a ridge and that is giving insertion to the muscle and this time the muscle is gluteus medius it's the gluteus medius which is inserted again to the greater trochanter only this is obviously once again greater trochanter but this time you can see it's on the lateral surface of greater trochanter the gluteus medius muscle is also supplied by the superior gluteal nerve it is supplied by the superior gluteal nerve and you know that gluteus medius function guys the function of gluteus medius muscle is the abduction at hip joint and because this muscle is responsible for the abduction at the hip joint and that's why 
the test which is done to check the integrity of this muscle is the Trendelenburg test. The Trendelenburg test. This Trendelenburg test is done for the gluteus medius which is inserted on the, the greater trochanter. Now coming to the main point guys, the point here is gluteus minimus and gluteus medius are attached to greater trochanter. So if there is a fracture of the greater trochanter, obviously the two muscles gone are medius is gone and minimus is gone here. So patient will have a difficulty in the internal rotation, will have a difficulty in the abduction here, but will not have a difficulty in the extension. Why? Because gluteus maximus is not attached to the trochanter. It's not attached to any trochanter, greater or lesser. Forget. Gluteus maximus muscle will be inserted below the greater trochanter on the dorsal aspect. Can you see that rough area over there on the femur? That rough area on the femur here, this is called as the, the gluteal tuberosity. This is called as gluteal tuberosity. That's gluteal tuberosity and gluteal tuberosity is providing insertion to what muscle? To the gluteus maximus muscle. It provides insertion to gluteus maximus. Guys, gluteus maximus is supplied by the inferior gluteal nerve. It is supplied by the inferior gluteal nerve and the function of gluteus maximus, it is a muscle for the extension at the hip. So this muscle is responsible for the extension at the hip joint here. So greater trochanter fracture, when they give you a case of greater trochanter fracture or attachment for that, look for the gluteus maximus, not on the greater or lesser trochanter, but on the posterior aspect, below the greater trochanter, there is a ridge here called as a gluteal tuberosity. Similarly, similarly, this lesser trochanter, guys, this lesser trochanter, this is lesser trochanter here, is also providing insertion, just is also providing insertion and that is the insertion for iliosuas. The iliacus and suas major muscle together forms a common tendon and that iliosuas tendon will be inserted to the lesser trochanter. <coughs> Just below lesser trochanter you will see a, a line, I hope you can see that in the picture also guys. Can, can you see that line over there? Look at that line which is going toward the gluteal tuberosity. This line which is converging toward the gluteal tuberosity here, this line is the pectineal line and this is an insertion for pectineous muscle. That's where the pectineous muscle is inserted and after that this pectineal line and gluteal tuberosity, they together will continue as a posterior border. I mean after that you will see the posterior border of the femur which is a very prominent border of femur on the posterior aspect and that is called as linea aspera. That posterior border of the femur is called as a linea aspera. It's a very, very prominent border, the posterior border of the femur. We call it linea aspera. So overall, my motive here is to tell you that whether they uh, give you a picture of the femur or they ask you about the attachment here or even if they give a clinical question regarding the fracture of greater trochanter or lesser trochanter, especially the greater trochanter fracture. So just keep in mind that what muscle is attached there and what function will be lost. So it's obviously gluteus minimus and medius will be affected if the greater trochanter is involved. Gluteus maximus muscle will be spared because it is attached to the gluteal tuberosity which is below the greater trochanter on the dorsal aspect. <clears throat> so this is some very very important attachments on the upper end of the femur and make sure at least this much you should know about it to, to get the answer to the questions which are asked. As I said, apart from this, the gluteal muscles and all these are very important and again, uh, based on the recent year questions, the gluteal region anyways is important guys. The structures which are present in the gluteal region, their nerve supply, the, the, the contents of the greater and lesser sciatic notch, uh, the relation of the ischial spine, the, I just spoke like four questions to you and all these four questions are asked in the previous four to five years itself. So this here is a picture of the gluteal region where see gluteus maximus muscle is removed. So there is no gluteus maximus muscle here. I can start from gluteus medius. That muscle over there is the gluteus medius. And you can see the gluteus medius is also cut. Deep to the gluteus medius, there is another one that is gluteus minimus. Now on the femur, we saw the insertion part. Now we are looking at the origin part here. So obviously the most superficial muscle is gluteus maximus, not shown here. They've removed it here. 
deep to gluteus maximus is gluteus medius and more deep to the gluteus medius is gluteus minimus and you can also make out from this insertion guide. look at the greater trochanter there can you see on the on the lateral side of greater trochanter i told you on the lateral side of greater trochanter this muscle will come here this gluteus medius muscle will come to the lateral side of greater trochanter you can see gluteus minimus muscle is going in front the gluteus minimus muscle is going in front to the anterior surface of the greater trochanter the two muscle on the greater trochanter that is gluteus medius this one and minimus is going in front now here we have a greater sciatic notch guys look at this part here that's a greater sciatic notch and lesser sciatic notch will be there in this region here so we have a greater sciatic notch and we have a lesser sciatic notch here first from the greater sciatic notch i can see a muscle coming out and this muscle here is piriformis the muscle which is coming out of the greater sciatic notch is piriformis muscle this this notch here is a greater sciatic notch and they do ask question on the contents of the greater and the lesser sciatic notch that's a greater sciatic notch and this one here will be the lesser sciatic notch the greater and the lesser so what i see that from the greater sciatic notch clearly i can see piriformis muscle coming out and from the lesser sciatic notch the muscle which is coming out here is obturator internus that muscle is obturator internus guys obturator internus muscle so one thing that you got to keep in mind the greater sciatic notch i mean we have other contents also but as of now you can see piriformis is a content of the greater sciatic notch whereas a lesser sciatic notch the content or the muscle which is coming out the tendon of obturator internus will be coming out from here the tendon of obturator internus is coming out from here other contents i will show in the next picture because it will be a little confusing otherwise above the above the uh, what do you say this muscle above the obturator internus and below the obturator internus there are two muscle there now that's a tendon of obturator internus in between above and below this is above this is below so we have a muscle which is running above and below not coming out of the notches notches means we just have a piriformis muscle and obturator internus but the muscle that you see present above the obturator internus and below are gemellus muscle guys this here is gemellus superior and the one below the obturator internus is gemellus inferior so you look for the obturator internus and you'll find the gemellus superior is above and gemellus inferior is below and look at this muscle guys now when you look at the femur from the dorsal aspect or posterior aspect i told you when you look at the femur from the posterior aspect you will not see intertrochanteric line you will see intertrochanteric crest and on the intertrochanteric crest a muscle is inserted here on the intertrochanteric crest there is a muscle inserted and this muscle is quadratus quadratus femoris obviously not quadriceps femoris quadratus femoris it's a quadrangular muscle in the gluteal region that is a quadratus femoris so that's the first thing identification of the muscle in the gluteal region guys gluteus maximus will be covering everything i'll show in the next picture here then we have more deep to this gluteus medius and gluteus medius is hiding gluteus minimus here so till the time these muscles are present i mean if the gluteus maximus is present you will not be able to see anything here gluteus medius if it is there then you will not be able to see gluteus minimus so we have to cut it here and after that from the notches from the greater sciatic notch one muscle comes out very important muscle because that will help you to remember or to understand the nerves and vessels and from the lesser sciatic notch also one muscle comes out that is obturator internus above the obturator internus below the obturator internus are gemellus superior gemellus inferior and then we have this quadrangular muscle called as a quadratus femoris the next image guys i'm using i will tell you more contents of the greater and lesser sciatic notch so before we go there let me just let's just anticipate here above the piriformis you will see superior gluteal nerves and vessels and below piriformis will be inferior gluteal nerves and vessels the superior will come above inferior will come below and because the name is greater sciatic notch so the main nerve coming out of the greater sciatic notch will be the sciatic nerve you will see the main sciatic nerve will be coming out from the greater sciatic notch only and then you will see three structures which are common in greater sciatic notch as well as lesser sciatic notch you will see there are certain structures which will come out from the greater sciatic notch and immediately those structures will enter into the lesser sciatic notch to go into perineum 
and those are pin structures pin p i n pudendal nerve internal pudendal vessels and nerve to obturator internus these three structures they don't have to do anything in the gluteal region they just comes out of the greater sciatic notch and re enter into the lesser sciatic notch just to go into the perineum and that's why you see these three contents in the greater as well as in the lesser sciatic notches okay now look at this picture guys if you look at this picture here the same image but this must this time the gluteus maximus muscle is also shown look at this huge glus muscle once this muscle is intact you cannot see anything inside here so they have to cut the muscle then only you can peek inside this well obviously this muscle here is piriformis let me just label it here guys that is a piriformis muscle and i told you the nerves and vessels which are present above the piriformis they are what they are superior gluteal nerves and vessels so these are superior gluteal nerves and vessels and just below piriformis here we have inferior gluteal nerves and vessels so above the piriformis below the piriformis now obviously the main structure passing from the greater sciatic notch that below piriformis only that is the sciatic nerve that's the sciatic nerve and you can see there is a nerve running along with the sciatic nerve can you see that nerve over there the one the one which i'm pointing at so there is a nerve which runs with the sciatic nerve just medial to the sciatic nerve here and that's the cutaneous nerve this is the posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh pcnt i've written posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh it just runs medial to the sciatic nerve also is a content of greater sciatic notch so till now i can see superior gluteal nerves and vessels inferior gluteal nerves and vessels piriformis sciatic nerve posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh these are there in the greater sciatic notch and guys then we said the three structures i hope you can appreciate these three structures there look at that all those three structures here they are coming out of the greater sciatic notch and then entering into lesser sciatic notch they are pin structures the p i n structure pin the p stands for pudendal nerve i is for internal pudendal vessels internal pudendal vessels and n stands for nerve to obturator internus nerve to obturator internus so these pin structures are the one that you will see in the coming out of the greater and going into the lesser sciatic notch the pin pudendal nerve internal pudendal vessels and nerve to obturator internus <coughs> so if the question is asked to you there are three questions in here guys contents of greater sciatic notch overall contents of greater sciatic notch and based on this diagram the the, the, the two pictures that we just saw i want you to write it down also guys in the greater sciatic notch in the greater sciatic notch the contents are now starting with there's a muscle and the muscle is piriformis then we have superior gluteal nerve and vessel the one which are below are inferior gluteal nerve and vessels the main nerve coming out of the greater sciatic notch is the sciatic nerve itself running along with the sciatic nerve is the posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh the pcnt the posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh and then we got pin structures you know what a pin pin stands for the pin structures here similarly lesser sciatic notch in case of lesser sciatic notch the muscle there is obturator internus the muscle coming out of the lesser sciatic notch is obturator internus and once again the pin structures which are entering through this lesser sciatic notch so that again is a good question to be asked that the greater and the lesser sciatic notch what are the contents here i also notice that they even ask this question about again the pin structures only 
where they are running guys when you look at the greater sciatic notch imagine if this is a, if this here is a greater sciatic notch like this and there is a lesser sciatic notch in that picture actually the uh, the muscles are there so i cannot see that bony prominence here if this here is the greater sciatic notch and here is the lesser sciatic notch what is separating them is the spine here and that spine is called as a ischial spine that spine which is separating the greater and lesser sciatic notch is called as a ischial spine and why this ischial spine is an important bony landmark because your pin structures are running on it here so your pudendal nerve will come like this and will run on and then go like this that is pudendal nerve same internal pudendal vessels will come like this and even nerve to obturator internus will also come like this run on the ischial spine and will go backward here so pin the pin structure that we said which are present are running on the ischial spine here and especially guys p p is what pudendal nerve you all know that when the pudendal nerve block is to be done in the perineal surgeries and all if the pudendal nerve block is to be done then obviously it is done against the ischial spine so the bony prominence on which the pudendal nerve is running is the ischial spine and against the ischial spine only we do the pudendal nerve block is done so that's another important relation they might ask this question about that uh, the pudendal nerve block or they will ask a question like if the if, if there is a fracture of ischial spine that what nerve will be involved so, so, and anything like that so you should know that the three important structure which are running just behind the ischial spine from the greater to lesser sciatic notch are pin structures only